everyone. My name is Heather Augustiniak. I am the lead nurse practitioner for Baptist MD Anderson's survivorship program. Today we have our Life After Cancer Patient Education Series, and we're honored to have Anne-Marie Crispell come to us to talk about physical activity versus physical inactivity. Anne-Marie, thank you for coming. If you'd like, um, you can take over. Great, thank you. Um, thank you for having me. Absolutely. I'm excited to be here with you guys. Uh, a little bit about me. I am, I've been a nurse for a little while now. Before that, I was a PE teacher. So physical activity is pretty important to me. Um, I have um, worked with all different people in all different situations and really enjoy getting to know every one of um, the wonderful people I work with. Um, I come to you with a master's in holistic nursing, a bachelor's in education, a bachelor's in nursing, and I'm currently working on my doctorate at the University of Florida in psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner. So let's dive in to talk about something that is very simple, um, but important, very important, uh, physical activity versus physical inactivity. So one of the most important cancer risk factors that can be changed are um, noted on the right. These are what we call modifiable risk factors. These are things that generally we have some element of control over. Those things include uh, body weight, our diet, which is what we eat, what we drink, physical activity, and stress. Those four things are what we consider modifiable risk factors that can help improve our chances of cancer reoccurrence and, and minimize those chances. So without um, really going so much into physical activity and inactivity, our biggest barriers sometimes are our own emotions. Emotions tend to be high, especially in this day with the situations we're given and stress is real. Our emotions can sometimes keep us from moving forward to having a physically active lifestyle that we genuinely want. These things can manifest as worrying about things. How will I look? How will I feel? Um, will it hurt me if I do certain exercises? Fear of reoccurrence of cancer, um, that fear in itself keeps, can keep us stuck from making um, good strides. Feeling down or sad or depressed, things that whether were controllable or not controllable in your life that get to you, anxiety, grief, guilt, and sometimes we feel numb. And sometimes we can go into some sort of spiritual distress over what's happening to us or our loved ones. Um, these things can keep us stuck from living the physically active lifestyle that we truly wanna live. So, Let's start by talking a little bit about sedentary behavior. And I've been with Baptist for about seven years now working as a wellness coach. And we have coached hundreds and hundreds of people through various different um, cancer diagnoses, cardiac issues, all different types of things. But our behaviors are generally always, you know, a path. So um, sedentary behavior is what we try to avoid. Um, with technological advances, the amount of time spent sitting has increased significantly over the past few decades. We know this, and it has been estimated that more than half of non-occupational time is spent on a screen. So that's half of the time you're not at work, you're in front of a screen, whether it's a television screen, the, the phone screen, computer screen, some sort of screen that you're behind. That generally keeps, generally keeps us sedentary. Now, prolonged sitting has been associated with premature mortality, which means um, we die earlier. Type 2 diabetes, which means um, our insulin resistance turns into, um, gets stronger, and we no longer can clear the amount of carbohydrates we eat. And our cardiovascular disease risks increase. Evidence is accumulating to support a role separate from physical activity in relation to cancer. So there is moderate evidence linking prolonged sitting time with higher risks 
of colon, endometrial, and lung cancers, not to mention the cardiovascular risk factors and the diabetes risk factors associated with sitting too much or not moving around enough. So early evidence suggests that reducing sitting time may be important for cancer prevention. So think about that. So we have, um, you know, we do live in Florida where it's, we can pretty much be outside year round with a couple of exceptions of the heat and potentially big rains. Um, just getting up and moving helps reduce our risk. It doesn't have to be, I'm gonna train for the Donna Marathon. It doesn't have to be, I'm gonna, um, you know, hike the Appalachian Trail. It just means getting up and taking a walk around the block, which is helpful for a lot of um, physiological responses in our body. Not to mention what we just kind of talked through was the emotional states that we can be in, whether it was from a cancer diagnosis or a comorbidity or from family stressors or financial stressors or whatever. We all have these emotions that can keep us stuck into a sedentary behavior. What we wanna do is to reduce our risks, improve our mental health and move towards a more physically active lifestyle. So um, there are recommendations for being physically active. So when I share these with you, I don't want you to look at them and think, oh my goodness, I'm nowhere near that. I haven't gotten up. I haven't done anything for a while. We are not here to look at this as where you need to be today, tomorrow, next week, or even by the end of the year. The goal is to continually progress to move towards meeting these goals because we know from an evidence-based standpoint that having these amounts of physical activity are going to reduce your risk of heart disease, are gonna reduce your risk of cancer reoccurrence, and are gonna reduce your risk of um, any type of uh, obesity and the comorbidities related to obesity. So let's go over these recommendations. And I want you to think in mind that I don't have to be here, but I can be here. So it's recommended that we have 150 to 300 minutes of moderate to intense intense physical activity per week. So moderate intensity is where, you know, you're slightly out of breath, but you can still kind of get out a few words, maybe three or four words before taking the breath, moderate intensity. Um, you definitely can't speak like I'm speaking right now. You know, you might be able to power walk and speak. That's more of a lower intensity, but a moderate intensity physical activity is getting your heart rate up a little bit. And so you can also get it through 75 to 150 minutes of vigorous intensity physical activity. That's when you know you're sweating. That's when you're running. That's when you're engrossed in the game of basketball. That's when you're, um, you know, you might be outside jumping on the trampoline with the kids, messing around, whatever it is that vigorous intensity physical activity, um, you can shorten it of the 150 to 30 minutes by doing shorter, more physical, vigorous activities. So, and then you can have any combination of the two. So some days you might be out walking the dog, other days you might be striving to meet that 5k goal, which is okay. Um, and a great goal to have. So achieving or exceeding the upper limit of 300 minutes is optimal. So some studies are really saying, you know, up to that 300 minutes is that sweet spot to gain, um, the benefits of physical activity. So when we are moving, our, our hearts are pumping, our blood is being circulated through our veins, um, and we turn back to the heart and our circular, like our cardiovascular system is really getting a nice, um, you know, flow. We are giving our body and our cells and our muscles nutrients, and we are um, lowering our risk for lots of these things, helping our brain. So um, keep those in mind. Uh, what can I do? So I'm gonna assume that you are not working out at all right now. So I'm talking to my friends out there that are, I know I need to, but I don't know where to start. I, I should, I just, I can't, you know, and you're kind of stuck, right? So how do we get unstuck? So remember, some activity is better than none. Um, even housework is a great place to start and making cleaning up the house or going outside just down to the stop sign and back. Any activity is better than none. And it also changes your frame of mind. Remember those um, feelings that we had? If we're stuck in any one of those mental spaces, 
we're able to just change the scenery, get outside, get some vitamin D, um, and move through the the, um, the 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 neighborhood and just see the air, move through the trees. These things. Some activity is better than none. Move more, sit less. Excuse me. Moving more and sitting less is, is what you're aiming to do. I've heard that sitting is the new smoking. I, I don't know if that's really actually studied, but the premise is, is that the more time you are physically inactive, the harsher it is on your body, um, similar to smoking and cardiovascular risk diseases. So we just gotta get up and move around, put on your favorite song or stand up while you're watching TV. You know, if you need to get up and uh, throw in a load of laundry during the TV shows, move more, sit less. So muscle strengthening is important. We want to keep, um, there, it's for a few reasons we do total body strengthening. And this, if, if you have never done strength training before, um, don't be intimidated. You can do body weight exercises. If you even struggle just getting out of the chair and sitting back down, even doing 20 times, sitting up, standing down, very, very simple and trying to move to standing on one leg, working on your balance, working on keeping the integrity in the muscles around your joints, working on um, maintaining the strength of the uh, muscle fibers that you do have, and then potentially even um, strengthening the ones that you have. So you wanna maintain your integrity, if not improve, and then keep your joints from um, protected with strong muscles around them. And now when we're talking about cancer, like prevention, aerobic activity is probably one of the best things that um, you can do as research suggests, um, making sure you're getting that 300 minutes of moderate activity, or even if you're at zero, moving it to 30 minutes a week of moderate activity. So um, getting up and walking and moving the, get the blood flow moving and it improves your immune response, which ultimately we all want, especially in this day and age. So here are a few other benefits of physical activity. Um, it helps insulin and glucose metabolism, which um, if these some of these words are jargon to you, um, don't worry, they're all good things for you. So with that insulin glucose metabolism is it helps you from getting diabetes. We don't want you to have diabetes. We want you to stay healthy. Um, so it helps with that. And even if you do have diabetes, depending on where you're at in the stages, sometimes it's a little bit, um, it improves um, quite often when you become physically active. Your immune function, we often want like as much immunity as we can, especially when we're um, in the times that we are, we wanna keep our immune system strong and all those cells that fight for us, um, healthy and fed. So um, exercising regularly keeps your immune system strong. Um, inflammation. Um, now, sometimes when you go out and you do something and you're starting something, you might become inflamed and sore, um, especially if you have a lot of weight to lose. If you have a lot of weight to lose, you know, your hips start hurting, your knees start hurting, maybe your back. But over time, with that exercise, your body kind of moves that inflammation out and you become stronger and then it'll actually reduce the inflammation that you experience in your, in your body. Our sex hormones, um, keeping our hormones in balance is really important um, for various different reasons, um, but physical activity helps keep our different sex hormones in, in check. So oxidative stress, we talk about um, antioxidants and free radicals. Again, this might be jargon for you, but the idea is that it reduces oxidative stress on our, on our tissues or our cells. And when we do that, we're, um, we're keeping our cells really happy. And every single disease process starts with one cell that's inflamed. And you, you know it can be for various reasons, but oxidative stress being one of them. But going ahead and reducing that oxidative stress, keeping those cellular um, um, components not inflamed is the idea. Um, genomic, genomic instability. So um, epigenetics is a very big term that has blown up in the last 10 years. And we want to make sure that um, even if we have certain genes that will express themselves, um, can express themselves rather, 
that we do what we can to keep the environment healthy so it doesn't express itself. So we can, we might be given certain genes that might predispose us to certain disease processes, but what we wanna do is negate that as best as we can and physical activity is a way to do that. Um, prevents weight gain. Weight gain is not comfortable. We gotta buy new clothes. We don't feel good about ourselves. Um, maybe you do. Um, I don't. I shouldn't make that blanket statement, but generally saying when we gain weight, we don't feel good about ourselves, and um, we stay. If we stay within a healthier target weight, um, then uh, we reduce, like we said, our risk factors for other uh, disease processes. So, also what we started off for the stress is real, and I just I can't um, can't stress enough how much I would love to help you reduce your stress. So releasing stress through physical activity um, and making sure you pick something that you like to do. Don't sign up and say, I'm gonna do this X, Y, and Z for five days a week, just because you know it's the best for you. Pick something that you truly like. If you like to be out gardening, go out and garden, build a garden. If you like to go out and water ski, get out and water ski, but you know, just pick something that brings you some level of joy and implement that promotes positive feelings. So you negate those original feelings that we kind of went through um, in, in the beginning of this. And you start to build more self-efficacy of like, hey, I feel good, that was good. Or I saw this outside when I was on my walk. You know, hopefully you have more positive feelings, experiences because that also helps reduce stress. And that's what we want more of. And then it can help social support. So if you're looking at, um, you know, like, getting involved in some sort of group activity or group walks. I know it's it's generally hard right now um, and we need to be cautious, but um, you know, I see a, a couple of ladies in my neighborhood, one walks in the street and the other walks in the um, on the sidewalk. And every morning you see them socially distanced walking through. So I, I think even through the pandemic, they've maintained their relationship and their walking status by, by doing that. So um, all the good things, about physical activity. So healthy eating, healthy eating is important. And I know that you'll have another session about healthy eating uh, with Mary Beth Torres coming up, but um, in generally speaking, foods high in nutrients and amounts that help achieve and maintain a healthy body weight are important. What, what that kind of means is pick good foods. It's high in fiber, but um, just because it's healthy doesn't mean you should eat it all. I have a very good friend who's like, oh, it's healthy, you know, and um, ends up gaining weight um, when, when she tries out a new healthy food. So be mindful of that and calories and things. So a variety of vegetables, dark green, red, orange, fiber rich legumes, um, eat the rainbow. We want as many different varieties as you can, as long as, um, you know, you can tolerate those foods. Of course, we don't want to eat things that aren't um, aren't going to sit well with us. But those are going to be some really great options. The phytonutrients in each one of these different colors serve us in different ways. So that's the old saying: is eat a rainbow, um, because we need as many. We have a lot of different cells with a lot of different needs, and so having a variety helps to ensure that we meet those needs. And then fruits, of course, with a variety of color as well. Um, and whole grains. Whole grains have um, a lot of fiber. They're not as processed out. And um, within those whole grains, you're going to have more vitamin nutrients. So um, it might not always be the fun way to eat, but you can actually change your palate um, if you go forward and try to have, um, you, know, you don't have to be a vegetarian, but eating as many fruits and vegetables as you can. One of the things that I've really tried to hold true to myself and um, those that I've coached is whenever you're eating, remind yourself if you're feeding your cells or feeding your soul. Now your cells need one thing, and this is what we just have up on this slide right now, the variety of fruits and vegetables, colors, fiber, um, and the right amounts, um, or feeding your soul, which is I really want a fried chicken and some French fries, and I don't wanna, you know, feeding your soul. So if you're in those negative thought patterns like we discussed in the morning and, or in the beginning um, of this lecture, then we want to try to feed ourselves what they need to help bring us out of that. Because if we do go for that fried chicken and that Coca-Cola and the side of fries with the 
barbecue sauce, we are um, going to perpetuate a different direction, right? So bringing us out. And if your soul is needing to be fed, or if you are dealing with one of those emotions, um, the social support aspect and um, journaling, all different types of things to keep you out of the habits that we can kind of dig ourselves into. So when we do talk about healthy eating, we try to avoid these, these things generally. So red and processed meats, these can be inflammatory in nature. Actually, all of these on this page are inflammatory in nature, and that's why we try to avoid them. Generally speaking, um, fruits and vegetables and whole grains are not inflammatory unless you know you have something where you can't have whole grains um, medically. But the idea, like we said, if all disease processes start with one inflamed cell, our idea is to not inflame our cells. So um, red and processed meats are, um, you know, maybe twice a month, try to aim for. Um, I'm from the Midwest. So, I mean, we were, we were having these things every, you know, mostly every night. So um, depending on your culture, that may be difficult to do, but aiming towards twice a month of, of the red meats, steaks, hamburgers. And then um, if you are doing processed meats, um, there are a good variety of like nitrate and nitrite free um, sausages and hot dogs. And um, there's better options out there. They are a little bit more expensive, but I think it's worth it in the long run. Sugar and sweetened beverages. I, we love our sweets and you know, our sweet tea down here is really important. And We've got some great ice cream shops around here. So um, really just think about um, having sugar and cake and candies and these things um, once a year. I mean, that, that once a year is shocking, but we really shouldn't be getting cake. We have no real reason to be eating cake and these things other than if these are sold. So we got to figure out why our souls needing to be fed or what we need to work through and not be leaning on a lot of the junk food. Um, and that's that can be a process. And we'll talk about some steps about that later. But um, going for the unsweetened tea or the half and half even is a better option. And trying to change your palate to like more fruits and vegetables or um, variants of that and um, keeping it healthy. I know Mary Beth will give some opportunities for that as well. Um, Highly processed foods and refined green products. So this is um, very inflammatory, but very convenient. Um, these things are everywhere. Uh, having sugary cereals, the highly processed um, breads, pastas, um, just the things that you know we we kind of lean towards. So again. I'm not a big fan of completely eliminating things out of your diet, but just try to cut back and do your best. And when you slip up, have grace, try to get back on the next day. Or if you do have something that you're not supposed to have, make up for it with a little bit of physical activity the next day. Alcohol consumption. Um, you know, I always hear, well, some people say alcohol is good for you and other people say it's not. So from a cardiovascular standpoint, red wine can be good for you. From a, um, a, you know, a cancer standpoint, we know cancer is linked to um, at least seven different types. I'm sorry, alcohol is linked to at least seven different types of cancer. So, you know, we, we want to, if we can avoid alcohol, um, we should. Uh, and, but if you can't, then limiting it to people who choose to drink should um, limit their consumption to no more than one drink a day for women and two drinks a day for men. That shows the lower risk factor. Keeping it in those in those parameters, I would suggest. Um, alcohol is the third major modifiable risk factor after tobacco and excessive body weight for cancer. So that that to me is alarming. So I'm okay with skipping my red wine sometimes at dinner now because you know I don't I don't want to be putting myself at any more risk than I need to be. Like I said, alcohol use is an established cause of at least seven types of cancer. Of course, liver being one of the biggest ones. Um, consuming zero drinks daily um, minimize the overall risk to health. So keep that in mind. Of course, um, I think it's like sweets and sugars um, two times a year, great. But if you are one of these people that um, can, you know, is, is finding yourself drinking a little bit more that's empty calories, and put yourself at risk, but um, okay. So 
one of the things that I would like to focus on is resources. So let's just say you are on the couch and you are, we're well not literally, but you know, you'll just figure like you're a couch potato and you want to get more physically active because you know that these things are good for you. Well, how do you do that? A lot of this is not just pure willpower, it's actually behavior change. And behavior change is a science that several people study and have a big heart and want to help you um, move through that. And it's not a very linear process. As you may know, it takes people often several times to start and quit. Um, and every time I feel like you try to start to make a change and then quit, it's harder to try to start it up again. So. Um, there are resources out there for you um, in terms of health coaches. So Baptist Health has several health partnerships um, with the YMCA and the Jewish Community Center, and they're all over Duval County. And we also take, um, we take in-person visits and we do virtual and or telephonic visits. And the good news is, is generally they're all free. So with that being said, you have access to a certified health coach um, on the Baptist health team integrated into the Baptist system that can help you um, on your journey. Uh, and if you need care navigation or anything, they're very well versed in, um, in the system. So I'm gonna show you first the Healthy Living Centers. Um, this is the page, um, Baptist Jacks Locations Healthy Living Centers. Now. The Healthy Living Centers is generally a branding that's done in the YMCA, and um, they do free health screenings. Um, so these things, these health screenings are going to, it's like a simple blood, blood prick to your finger, and they'll go ahead and tell you your glucose, cholesterol, triglycerides, and um, you'll stand on a scale and get your body composition, and it's not that scary, I promise you. Um, and then your blood pressure, of course. So you get this free screening done, and then you can go on with health coaching, and they're going to help you set goals and um, look at your risks. And these, I'm just going to shout out, these are some of my coworkers. Courtney's at the Riverside, Katie's at Nocatee, Carol's at the Northside YMCA, um, Jean is, uh, bounces all around, Diana's generally housed at the North, but now down at Nocatee. Um, and then Michael boats around as well. So we are overseen, they are overseen by a physician and all of what they do. So they are credentialed and able to help you. Now, um, this is just a map with all of the locations. Um, so we got um, Ponte Vedra over here. We got Nocatee over here. We got the Mandarin YMCA, Riverside, um, North, and then Dunn. So, um, we tried to put them and place them in all the different areas, and um, so far we've done that. But um, even if you call one of the YMCA's that's close to you, you can ask for a Healthy Living Center, and they should um, be able to help you out. And then lastly, I'm going to go ahead and share um, the Jewish Community Alliance. They house two registered nurses and um, and a health coach there. And the nurses are also health coaches. And this, this is uh, Tim, he's a nurse, Lisa's a nurse, and then Skylar is also um, a great health coach. So um, they offer the same things at the JCA, but one of the best things about the JCA is they do have um, aqua aerobics and different, um, they have an indoor heated pool. So you, if, if you do have a lot of weight to lose, and you do have um, joints that are um, compromised, getting in that pool and walking or swimming or doing one of the aqua programs is such a great way to start. And the JC is very accommodating um, and has really great experienced trainers to help you as well. So um, these are just websites off of the baptistjacks.com um, website and um, you know, Baptist-Wellness-Connection at JCA. So of course, if you need anything um, and further recommendations, uh, you can always email me at amory.crispell at bmcjacks.com. And with that being said, most of the information I pulled was right off of the cancer.org website. Um, they have plenty of like 
uh, really easy to read articles. And sometimes for me, I'm an intellectual person, I like to read and then it motivates me. But if you need to be with somebody and a person, um, I recommend you reaching out to the free services that are phenomenal um, all throughout this town and um, get that support that you need to be more physically active and less physically inactive. And I wanted to say thank you, uh, Heather, for the time to share with, um, with your group. And I'm just really delighted to be a part of the survivorship program. And I'm so excited to see how it's growing. Oh, thank you. I have a few questions for you that came through. I just wanted to um, have you, there's two of them, if that's okay by you. Of course. Um, one of them is related to osteoporosis or bone loss. Um, a lot of our cancer treatments cause bone loss and um, a patient was inquiring of what kind of exercises can help with this. Yeah, and so unfortunately, like you said, that can be a, a side effect of some of the cancer treatments and um, foot on ground movement. Walking is, is great, but if walking is not where you need to, like you're just not ready to be walking um, and you're not there yet, getting in the pool and moving until you can get out and walking. So. Um, the water aerobics classes, they do it where you can stand and, of course, it takes some of the joint um, pressure off. And But it's a great place to start to get you to the point of foot on ground movement, taking, or, or if you are at that place where you, you are already active, um, walking um, up the stairs, taking um, long walks, foot on ground to just make sure you're moving, right? Thank you. And then the last one is, um, how do I sustain the change um, of exercise? Typically, um, I start and a month later I stop. So I think um, it's going to happen, right? Something is going to get in your way and that's part of the journey. So you, you realize that it's part of your journey, but you know, when you do slip, right, we'll say it's slip or you just kind of you detour off the path that you want to be on, you find yourself back. And I think that's where working with a health coach, at least for three months, is going to help really instill healthy behaviors and anchoring those um, patterns into your life. But I think one of the first things is when you do slip off or you, you, know, you kind of tangent off that you realize this is a part of the process. I'm not bad. I didn't fail. Um, this is normal, and now I'm going to choose to get back on, and you take the steps back. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming and um, sharing your knowledge and um, volunteering your time. Um, this lecture will be available online for everybody to see um, and refer back to. Um, I hope you guys have a good day. Thank you.